My name is Larissa Tornio. I'm country singer-songwriter based in Ireland, and you are watching my video blog dedicated to country music in European countries and beyond. edition of my music broadcast country and folk in Europe and beyond and I have a beautiful guest today her name is Kathy Crean and she's singer-songwriter based in Ireland and she sings country classical country Kathy don't is it this that's yeah, just it's kind of crossover country I guess people tend to call it so it's a little bit American country and Irish country mixed up okay well, I must say I'm a big fan of your music, Kathy. It's why I, uh, why I wanted to record this interview, because my journey as a country singer, um, unexpected country singer, started from listening to your album, your last wow. album. Wow, I didn't know that. There was a, kind of a small role into it, but then I heard your album and I said, well, if country is like that, I want to sing it. That is so special. Thank you. That's amazing. Well, I, I'd, say, I'd say, you know, they say and you have to watch the science in life, isn't it? Yes. To follow the science. So your, your singing, your beautiful voice was a sign. It's a, uh, there's so much uh, soul in your, in your voice and your singing you. um, that it's really connected with me. Tell us, please, that I want people to know as much as possible about you. When did you start to sing? Oh, gosh, um, probably about four years of age. <laughs> Um, so I've always been singing. I used to sing in the choir with my dad and um, a, a church. And um, then we went on and did lots of sort of talent competitions. And I joined my first band when I was 17 and I was doing pop and rock music. And then I did it's wedding fine. bands for a long time. So. Your family was kind of very musical then, I got it. My it? dad, my mother will tell you she can't sing anything. She sings, my mother sings so out of tune, it sounds like harmony. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you all I it is true. true. It is so true. We we tease her terribly about it. <laughs> <laughs> so your dad was big into music. My my dad <laughs> my dad has passed over and and yeah, he he was a huge influence on my music, yeah. Yeah. And he was a great singer himself. But he was my biggest fan and my biggest supporter and used to drive me to all my gigs before I started driving and uh -huh. yeah, he was amazing, yeah. So anyway, your first experience, you, you joined the band at 17 and did you write the songs already that time or did you start so, later? Mm, I, I was, I'm kind of writing since I was about 15. Okay. So um, now very badly from 15. So from about 15 to maybe 20, I would have written stuff and it got better and better and better mm -hmm. in my head, at least anyway, that okay. I actually, by the time I was maybe 22, I started playing them for other people. But prior to that, I wouldn't play it for anybody. Oh. Um, and I suppose my whole Nashville connection now has kind of educated me on writing. And I feel I, I've definitely gotten better in the last sort of 10 years. So what made you better? Just practicing continues or in interacting with yeah, I think inter I interacting I, I was quite a solitary creature when it came to writing so it was very much me and my own and not knowing there's there are certain rules and criteria when it comes to writing I, I mean and I was getting stuff wrong I was getting sort of formats wrong and and I think I think definitely I've been educated as the years have gone on from other writers, from established writers, you know. Did you have a formal education, music education, or you didn't, or just so? No, so I, I come from like the middle of nowhere, the middle of the bog, right? <laughs> so <laughs> so we're, I'm a country girl, proper country girl, but Irish country girl. And we, we had, I, like I went to school in a two-roomed school. So one side had like, you know, little baby infants right up to second class. And then the other room had the rest of the classes. And that was it. So we didn't have music education. We didn't have art, anything like that. Yeah. I think sometimes it's a good thing because it's make you kind of free spirited. It doesn't put it doesn't put you into any frame, you know. Yeah, and I think you know. I think if, if I mean obviously hereditary wise, there's talent there in my family. So I suppose if it's there naturally, it's going to come out regardless of whether you do it formally or not. You know. 
So what instrument do you, did you play then when you started to play your music to other people? Acoustic what? guitar, and I probably still play to the same level as I did then, because <laughs> that was self-taught too. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a little bit better, I think, since I've gotten older. Okay. I think you're good. I think you're very modest, <laughs> Katya. <Now, laughs> Thank you. Play the singing, so I mean, you're not as not professional as you said, you're very professional. So. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. <laughs> Time is a healer, that's what I've been told But it's easier to say than to make it go away A child's hand is reaching out to comfort me I see you in his eyes The memories in my mind will need more time We need started to write you from your teens 15 and all that and then when did you actually decide or did you decide to record anything at all so I, I I actually joined a band it was like there was only three of us in it so there was like a drummer a guitarist and myself on acoustic guitar mm -hmm. and we were doing stuff like Alanis Morissette and Avril Lavigne and it was all kind of pop punk yeah. it's quite good and cool good. So I was in my very very early 20s and um and i just i just wanted to do some of my own music in it it kind of felt like that kind of a, a group mm -hmm. so that i could put my own music in so so we recorded this song called wasted and um, which i'd written on the back of a beer mat in a pub <laughs> i saw it actually on spotify it's available isn't it yeah <laughs> it is ah oh, like but it's been it's been re-recorded a couple of times now but the original recording was really like rocky and stuff and uh but it's still one of my favorites and, and a lot of people kind of like it because they they kind of relate to it, right. I guess, in, in, in a kind of nice way. And now I'm holding up the bar and I'm pretty wasted. I've had so much beer, I can't even taste it anymore. What am I doing to myself? I don't play on my guitar. I saw the title, I said, hmm, that's a great title for song. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> so many of us... It was how I was feeling at the time. <laughs> yeah, but so, so many of us have these periods of life when you feel wasted, isn't it? So Absolutely. you can, can Absolutely. It. So that kind of, that was the first sort of avenue for me performing my own stuff on stage. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, I guess I got a bit braver and just, yeah, just threw my own stuff into my, my sets. Yeah. And as various bands you know I went through we started kind of introducing stuff like that now obviously not wedding bands but but sort of original type bands we did yeah so you were gigging then you were gigging kind of a lot that time yeah and then then I had babies and that kind of it kind of went by the wayside because <laughs> I was busy so I, I, I read in your on your website on your biography that you kind of made a career break because you wanted to dedicate yourself to to your yeah, team. I kind of took time. I, I had twins at 31 and they, they they took up a lot of time. Of course. So, yes. so I, I took time out but went back to college. So I ended up getting a psychology degree. So I wasn't doing nothing. <laughs> I was being a mom and I was I was I was educating myself, I guess, because I left school at 16. So I felt I, there was another side to me. Yeah. Yeah, well so done. That, yeah. <laughs> you had a psychology degree, which I'd say help you with your music now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it's, I look at everybody has their, their story. So I suppose it's, you have more of an appreciation for people, I guess, when you've studied yeah. psychology. Yeah. And then in 2014, first album, is it? Yeah. Yeah. That's about that album was it all your own music other people's music and where did a little you bit of both actually it was a little bit of both so it was it was called upstands and merry-go-rounds and it had a little bit of everything on it um it wasn't completely what i wanted but it still had original stuff which was i wanted to get that out there and um, and then the next album was the biggie because that was 
that was the one that kind of everybody, the one I presume that you like. Yeah, um, it's, that, far, that, it's, just... it's the most, I suppose it's the most professional. The first album was more like a demo album. Mm -hmm. um, and Loving What I Do was a professional album. We had, you know, people on there, musicians from Nashville, my producers from the UK, Pete Ware, who is a dream to work with, as you know. I know. Um, <laughs> and I love him dearly, love him. He's, he's just like my big brother, I love him dearly. And um, and he's just so good to work with. And I guess it was just like a magic melting pot. I think everything just came together and worked really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, and I really loved recording the album and I loved everything about it, really. I still love it. Yeah, it is amazing album. You Thank you. Very, very good. Most songs are so good. I mean, you know, sometimes you get an album, you're listening to it, you say, okay, there's a couple of good songs on us. Yeah. About that one, it was like every, I'd say every song was good. Thank you. Time. That's so nice of you. Thank very you. Good. But it's actually, it's it's worked then for you, Katya, because it was so well done. It brought you on the top of the kind of... Um, yeah, like surprisingly I so. I suppose I never really identified myself as an Irish country singer, for sure. Um, I knew there was American influences there, and I always listened to kind of, you know, Johnny Cash and, and the Eagles yeah. and, you know, people like Keith Urban and Trisha Yearwood and Garth Brooks. They were all people I really, really loved listening to. Um, <clears throat> but I didn't feel that Irish country was my niche at all. But even though it really isn't, it's they're still so accepting of me. And when I go on stage and perform my music, I don't feel like I'm any different to any other artist on these shows in Ireland. So I really appreciate like the Irish industry for that. You know, you do feel very welcome at those shows that we do, um, and we love doing them. Well, that's, um, I mean, in fairness, the Irish industry, country industry, um, becoming very versatile. Look at Russian country singer. Yeah, it's wonderful. Me. It's exactly, wonderful. it's changing, isn't it? Which is good. Absolutely, it has to be. It has to be different. It's more interesting for people, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, I think the audiences are younger, so I think they want more. Um, you know, like that. It's not just you know we we were so used to older people going to sort of you know Irish country scene, and yes. um, and and you know the dancing scene certainly. Awesome. Now it's it's just you know people just like good music. I mean, I did the the country to country Sunday World stage there a few weeks back. How was it? When the three arena, amazing. amazing. I love. I did it last year as well. I'm very fortunate to do it. I was um I was singing with Mark Roberts this year. It was wonderful, mm -hmm. um and it's just such a great event. But the audience are much much younger than what we'd be used to in the normal. Well, I say normal Irish country scene. As I say, it's changing. So. Yeah. And it's That's just very positive. It's very positive. It's wonderful it? to see. Yeah, because it means yeah. there's a whole new generation out there. You know, it's great. I, I agree. But I was told like a few times about that the that younger generation now they don't actually attach to one style of music anymore because of all this internet, YouTube. So yeah. actually searching for something good, it can be anything. Can be absolutely country. So your album went well, and uh, you were, I think you got a few awards, isn't it? I have a few, I have a nice little, yeah, nice little collection yeah, you know, on my what shelf. Tell me what <laughs> award. Yeah, I'll have to build a new cabinet. <laughs> Do. So what did you get, Katty? Tell us. Oh, I have Leinster Entertainment Awards, Farmer Journal Awards, um, I think, so Sunder World um, Duet of the Year was this year. This year, That's yeah. That's with Mark, which was brilliant. Um, but yeah, I've been really, really fortunate, really fortunate. I've had some lovely awards, Hot Country Awards, really, yeah. It's fabulous. It's fabulous to be recognized, isn't it, for what you do? Especially. Yeah, like you just, because, and, and it's from your own peers as well, which is great. Yeah. You know, it's, yes, it's, it's, yes, there are audience votes, but, you know, when, when your own people are voting for you, that's really something special. It is special. Yeah. Very, very nice. So anyway, your album went well, and then... Um, you say in this year you released, uh, this year I think, at the end of 2018, you released Duet with Mark Roberts, isn't it? Duet, yeah, absolutely. Just before Christmas, yeah, it was great. And some you got the award again for that. <laughs> yes, I know, we did. <laughs> <laughs> but he's so easy to work with and he's so lovely and the funniest guy in the business. He's just so, so funny. And, and the actual single was for a charity, originally mm -hmm. on an album. And that we were asked to do for the Kieran Marie Foundation, okay. which was this young man who passed away completely unexpectedly from cancer within a very short time of being diagnosed. And okay. um, he was actually getting injections to go to uh, to a foreign country. 
um, and this cancer just developed and it was just awful. So the family are really proactive in raising money and funds for the hospital that he was treated in. Mm -hmm. So that's what the, the concert or the charity CD rather was for. Yeah. Sometimes I think that I'm dreaming Or maybe I'm going insane Or maybe it's just I'm falling in love again It's, it's very, very interesting. I just, I urge all the people, go Google you and go to YouTube <laughs> channel. I subscribe to do, yes. <laughs> Facebook and just please follow this wonderful woman, very talented woman. Thank um, you so much. Kachi, tell us two things I want to know. First of all, where people can buy your music if they want to buy your music. So it's on iTunes, it's Spotify, you'll find me on YouTube if you just want to see videos and um, kathycrinion.com is my website mm -hmm. and um, yeah, you just type in my name, you'll find me. I'm like a rash, I'm all over the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Should we all have to be like a rash? Is that the way it would work? <laughs> and Please, the... Look me up and, and get in touch and say hi, I'd love that. Oh yeah, you're very sweet. And Kathy, um... What about your plans, future plans, anything planned? Yeah, so I've been to Nashville the last two years. I'm taking a little break this year, although I may go over later in the year because I, I tend to kind of change my mind. So I write over there and I stay with these lovely people who are, are um, one writer actually is a co-writer of Garth Brooks, um, yeah. Kent Maxson. He's an amazing writer and uh, the loveliest man himself and his wife are, are wonderful hosts to me. Um, and I get to write with people that are just wonderful, like Wood Newton and, um, you know, just people that I really look up to. And there were writers on my album. Um, how do you how do you write? Who writes what? Just a few words. How just does it work? together in a room and write, you know. Um, there's these guys called Dirt Road Degenerates. Remember that name because you'll hear about it. Okay. Um, and, and these are two young guys that are like in their mid twenties and they just sat down and we wrote this amazing song together. And it was just literally sitting on a floor in a room writing. It's changing everything, is it? It's changing and it's just, music. It's, it's great because you don't, you know, when you're, sometimes you're writing a song and you get stuck. Blow. Um, yeah. It doesn't happen in co-writes. Somebody's always thinking, so it's, it's really good. I, I always was a believer into, you know, one talent is good, but few talents together much better. You have to exchange. I think we need to support each other as musicians as well. I think we, we it, it can be a very lonesome, you know, yeah, exactly. industry. Yeah, you do feel like, especially for women, you do feel like you're on your own sometimes. Yeah, um, so I think it's, yeah, so I think we need to kind of, you know, get together and hook up and write some stuff and, yeah, be really, you know, proactive about our business. We should do something like that. Okay, so you said you're not going to Nashville this year, probably. You're not sure. But so I'm not ruling it out completely. <laughs> what about um, any, any new releases? Do, do Will you do it? Yeah, well, I, I have a song, Dance Alone, that was um, recorded at the same time as the duet. So I'm going to release that in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and it's another South Penned one. And, um, and then after that, I have another song coming out, not by me, but written by a friend of mine. And uh, it's the song I've wanted to record for about five years now. Mm -hmm. And it's been just sitting there on the back burner waiting to happen. Um, and the lovely Pete Ware is working on it as we speak. So I'm uh, looking forward to releasing that too. I'm looking forward to hear it. Thank you. Katya, thank you very much. It was lovely talking to you. Thanks for having me. It's brilliant. No, keep in touch and be going to post all your news. I have a group on Facebook. So any anytime you want to share, just go there and post everything. People know you. who you are That's now. Okay? Thank Bye. you so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sun comes up, I cook cakes on the griddle, goes love.